Hey tarot lovers, this is a signal boost for another channel. If you aren't subscribed to Masters of the Tarot, what are you doing? Get over there now. I've put links in the video description box along with all the master playlists uploaded so far. This video is just a sampling of the wisdom freely shared. Now go binge watch the masters. You know, we all have this thing like you think you're making it up. Well, yeah, but that's okay. I mean, what is making it up? Making up is like calling inside yourself the story and pull that story up and let go of the attachment of this means this, this position means that, you know, because it fell here, oh no, it's upside down. Let that all go, flow with it, open your psyche and read from your heart. And most of all, study yourself. To me, the myths are in their own way just as valuable as the history. Historically, they're in opposition. So we're questioning our own unverified personal gnosis, our UPG, as it were. They were always dark and confusing because I didn't even know who I was. I want to know the unknowable. If you look throughout the world at world cultures, divine possession is far, far, far more common than demonic possession. Yes. In the 60s, when uh, the, the New Age movement and, and psychics were everywhere, the Beatles went to India, everybody had a deck of cards. It was truly amazing. We, the living tarot was everywhere. Well, I think certainly in every generation, there's a wide variety of people, you know? I think in, in my generation, I think that people were, you know, particularly those of us in the early 80s, we were publishing books in the early 80s, but we got into tarot in the 70s. Um, me and Mary and Gail Fairfield. For us, we were trying to kind of break the tarot free from what it had been and open up a whole new way of being, you know? And I think what I see a lot in this new generation is it's very personal. With the internet and social media, that people can bring their own perspectives. You know, people can create decks that don't have to find a publisher, just have to find enough backers to pay for it and so on. I think there's a more personal, creative, and quirky kind of quality, which I love. I just think it's, what's being done now is fantastic. And I love all the new decks because you have a range. The present generation has tons more options. <laughs> you know, so um, when we first started out uh, in the late 60s and 70s, there was the, you either followed the French continental system of reading the cards, or basically some close variation on the Golden Dawn system. Um, and more and more cards through the 70s um, and US games were based on the Rider Waite Smith deck. Now you've got so many different art styles and people trying to break out of the uh, Rider Waite Smith symbology and explore their own symbology. Uh, crossovers with the oracle decks that don't have the same structure, so people are constantly adding new cards, um, additional cards. So um, people can feel freer to approach the tarot, I think, from a, an oracle basis. What my generation of tarot readers absolutely contributes and good on us, like, yay, is um, we're so creative and innovative and progressive. I think we are the generation that has, well, I believe, you know, have really, really pushed the envelope of what the tarot can be, where it can go, what it can do. We are talking about diversity in, in tarot card imagery. We're um, translating tarot books into more languages. Um, we are the generation that is making tarot into a global phenomenon. I think those storylines are really expressing what it is that a great number of tarot readers are reaching for. What you love, loves you. And I think if you love the tarot, it will love you back. It will respond to you. It will bring you great mysteries and you know, and revelations. And that's really the key to loving what you're doing. And then think it will come alive for you. And I think that's the most important tip I could recommend. We talk a lot about being light workers and wanting to be of service, but then at the same time, the way we actually approach tarot as a business, they like to, with their words, talk about service and put on this beautiful polish. 
an aesthetics of service and light work, but, but then actually use tarot in a very self-interested, selfish, materialistic way. Humans do what humans do. And if you're fighting that all the time, um, you're constantly working against what is. Don't be overwhelmed when you first look at a deck of cards and put the books down. Some people require a lot of discipline. They're going to go in with rote memorization of the card meanings and then slowly wean off of that, while others, if they try it that way, they would never get very far. So it's a very, very much case by case. You have to look at how you learn and you can't just look at how other people learn and, and emulate that just because it was successful for somebody else. And by that, I mean what some people call intuitive and I don't call it that because the more you know about the cards, the more intuitive you can be with them. The more you really understand their structure and, and understand um, the symbolism, the more intuitive you can be. The broader and deeper your personal pool of knowledge that you're drawing from, the more flexible your intuition and your psychic muscles are. So you really do need to study it. Break free of everything you've been taught. Make every reading like a new experience, as if it's for the first time. Laying out all the cards on the floor. I think a lot of people don't really get to know their deck. How much do you tell a client what you see, what you feel, or for the person you're reading for? In that, you need a lot of training, a lot of experience before you just blurt something out. I put that in the same category. Actually, when people ask me about the prospects of doing something I consider immoral. Like, you know, one person wanted to sleep with his married wife. He was like uh, an intern. He wanted to sleep with his married boss. She had two children. I would be upfront and say, this is not my belief system, but it doesn't matter. It's yours. And the belief system is about you, and therefore, it's only that what's, only thing that counts is what you believe, not what I believe. The reality that it is a form of affordable mental health care for a lot of people. I understand that for professional reasons and for health reasons, you cannot say that it is qualified mental health care and legally speaking, it's not. But we have to talk about the reality and the reality is for so many people, especially in, in today's divided society, it is the only form of mental health care that's available for a lot of people. This kind of life that we live, being readers, being psychics, is a requirement to look and feel everything. I wouldn't live any other way.